We're also following some breaking news in the investigation into President Trump's former attorney and longtime fixer, Michael Cohen. Tonight, Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, is confirming that the joint defense agreement between Trump and Cohen is no longer in effect. Now, that agreement would have allowed attorneys for both men to discuss aspects of the case. That no longer happening. This news comes just one day after CNN exclusively reported that Cohen might be looking to make a deal with special counsel Robert Mueller. Sources tell us Cohen now alleges Trump knew in advance about that infamous Trump Tower meeting back in 2016. That's when top Trump campaign officials met with Russians who were promising dirt on Hillary Clinton. Cohen's claim that Trump knew in advance about this meeting would completely contradict repeated denials by Trump and his legal team, even the White House press secretary, who have said Trump had no idea. With us to discuss this breaking development, two attorneys, Michael Moore is a former U.S. attorney, and Renato Mariotti is a CNN legal analyst and former federal prosecutor. So, Renato, Michael Flynn, I recall, ended his joint defense agreement with Trump before he flipped. Is that what Cohen is about to do, do you think? Well, it's certainly what Cohen wants to do. Uh, he has telegraphed it pretty, care pretty uh, obviously. He has not been coy at all uh, about uh, his newfound uh, desire to turn on the president. The question is just whether prosecutors are interested in his cooperation, whether he can hammer out a deal. Uh, but it definitely appears headed in that direction. Uh, at this point, Cohen has been, I think, pretty publicly critical of the president, uh, both himself and through his attorneys. Michael, this investigation into Cohen is being led by the Southern District of New York, sure. not Mueller. Right. So how would Mueller end up being involved in any possible plea deal with Cohen? You know, um, these things don't happen in a vacuum. In Mueller's case, just like just as if you had a prosecutor in one district handling a case and they had a cooperating witness who was charged with a crime in another district, uh, there would be some discussion back and forth about what they might expect and sort of the timing of pleas and terms of plea agreements, cooperation, that type of thing. So nothing that's happening is happening in a vacuum. I think it was a smart thing to have the uh, case handled out of the Southern District of New York. I don't think there's any doubt, and there shouldn't have been any doubt for some period of time that Cohen was going to flip. I mean, we've been talking about that now for, for some time, and, and, and here he goes, you know. Um, what's, what's interesting, and I think what we'll find, is that Bob Mueller probably already has the corroborating information that's going to be necessary to move forward on Cohen's testimony. And that is, yeah. my guess is that he's looked at phone records. He may have matched the anonymous number that was dialed off of there. He, he, he's probably talked to other, other witnesses. Uh, they may have looked at logs about who was in the building at the time or who was in the building beforehand. They may have looked to see, uh, you know, at emails. We, we don't know. Maybe Hope Hicks had some information about it that we just don't know yet. So my, my my guess is that corroboration piece has already been made and uh, and now, um, you know, uh, on to the races for, for Michael Cohen, who at least is getting good legal advice to watch out for himself because uh, Trump's pretty uh, clearly indicated that he's going to watch out for nobody but, but himself. Hmm. Renato, I want to ask you more about the idea of corroborating evidence because sources say Cohen doesn't have any hard evidence such as recordings, just his word. but. He says other people were in that room when Trump was told about this meeting. Does someone else need to corroborate Cohen's account for that evidence to be strong enough? Well, it certainly wouldn't hurt. Uh, and what prosecutors typically would do is try to, to question all of those people who are in the room. And even though a lot of those people are obviously going to be very loyal to the president, uh, when you know, as we're starting to see in this investigation, when you're facing potential prison time, when you're questioned under oath, when you uh, have your own lawyer and have a grand jury subpoena or are in for questioning with the FBI, that changes things. And uh, with that many people in the room, it's very hard for me to believe that all of them are going to stand with the president and not, you know, not be willing to talk about what happened. So I would expect uh, at some point we are going to see somebody else in the room talk about what happened and the question will be you know how uh, close their account is to Cohen's and then as uh, as Michael said what other corroborating evidence there is whether it's phone calls or or other things that can help corroborate at least some portion of what Cohen is saying and we know that Mueller has already gotten a couple of people for lying well I mean, that has been the undoing of some of these people who have gone before Mueller's team of investigators that's right and, and remember that there's nothing unusual about this case as as it relates to a case rats don't stay on a sinking ship and that's why you see in drug cases time and time again people involved in the drug conspiracy start telling on people on up the chain this is just another case like that 
people when they start to feel the news tight and they start to feel the ship go underwater, they're going to start jumping and, tell, and talking too. So they're not, they're not going to stand with the president uh, if, if they're beginning to recognize that in fact Bob Mueller and his team or the Southern District of New York uh, has information that is, is now going to be used against them. And so we're seeing that with Michael Cohen. We may see it with other people who were in the room and who have information that, that, that they'll share. Trump's legal strategy at this point seems to be to paint Cohen now as a liar. Sure. Um, but that's not what they've always said. I want you guys to listen to Rudy Giuliani a couple of months ago compared to now. He doesn't have any incriminating evidence about the president or himself. The man is an honest, honorable lawyer. I expected something like this from Cohen. He's been lying all week. I mean, or, or for two, he's been lying for years. I mean, He's so honest now. He's been lying for years. Well, another one of Trump's former lawyers spoke out about this, specifically that first soundbite where Giuliani praises Cohen. Here's Jay Goldberg. I know as soon as Giuliani spoke hmm. that he was damaging Trump's case immeasurably. 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 No defense-oriented lawyer would say that. Renato, has the damage been done? Can Giuliani have it both ways? I've got to say, uh, Giuliani has done a lot of damage to the president's case. Uh, he really is somebody who would do a lot better saying much less on television. You know, I am a legal analyst for CNN, but when I represent clients in cases, I'm very thoughtful and careful about saying anything to the press about a case. And often the best strategy for a lawyer is to say, Little, as little as possible to the press about a case, no matter how high profile it is. And a lot of the people connected with this entire um, uh, set of legal cases would do better saying a little bit less and doing a little bit more. And I will say for Mr. Giuliani, uh, most of the things he's uttered have ultimately been problematic for the president's case from the time where he was talking about um, what Trump knew regarding the Stormy Daniels payment uh, to waiving privilege uh, over the uh, recording by discussing the contents of the recording of the Trump uh, Cohen recording uh, to him praising Cohen's credibility. He really should uh, be much more careful about what he says. Well, it'll be interesting to hear what he says tomorrow morning because I know he's scheduled to go on a couple of the Sunday morning shows. So uh, we'll listen and we'll have you guys back and we can continue the discussion. Renato Mariotti and Michael Moore, thank you as always for being with us.